Ready when you are. I'm on three, right? Yep. It's another day for the Kindness Games. Welcome, everyone. We're so happy to see you today. And for me, I want to say a special shout out to a leader that I admire such a great deal. And that is my cousin, Juliana Gomez. She is such a strong woman who took a huge leap of faith left higher ed and started her own business because she really wanted to meet people who they are, where they are and provide them with nutritional um, opportunities and fitness to really exercise and feel good about who they are. And she's just such a kind human who every day focuses on really helping others become the healthiest version of themselves. And so I'm just so happy to be a part of this group and wanna make sure that everybody else has an opportunity to recognize who they admire as a leader. Was that number 18 for you? It was 18 for me. Wow. Yeah, 18 on the way to 30, woohoo. Okay, let <laughs> me get on the action. <clears throat> Overtime, number 12. What's going on everybody in the Kindness Games? Um, I am thankful for a guy uh, named Wes Bull. Wes is a security leader who is always kind. He is always kind to find young professionals, who he's raising up and he's always happy to grab coffee, grab a call and really help me break down uh, things that are not um, coming so easily for me or help me strategize on how to move forward with my career. And he's just for as busy of a guy as he is and as big a deal as he is, he's very generous with his time. time. So West Bull, thank you very much. We have doctors Rob McKenna and Daniel Halleck here, everybody. Woohoo! Woohoo! Virtual <laughs> clap! Woo oh, yeah, we can snap. Snap, snap, snap. Well, we're glad to have them on. We wanted to, uh, I think Dr. Halleck is on number four and Dr. McKenna is on number two. This will be three. Three. Awesome. I just wanted to let everybody know uh, that I'm a paramedic. So we're all in the same industry here. And uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how to fix leadership in this uh, crazy time we're in. Sounds good. <laughs> Where I do we start? Prefer, I prefer to use a scalpel. I don't know, Rob, you, you prefer more blunt instruments. Yes. As a, as a medical professional. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll give, a, I'll give a quick shout out to um, Eric Critchlow. And you would not tell by the last names, but he and I are related because I stole his daughter. And um, Eric has been an incredible mentor, advisor, guide. He fills a lot of boxes in my life. And I've thought of him for years as the executive in my back pocket, um, who I can uh, rely on for help, guidance, advice. But in, in many ways, he's been both a great father-in-law to me, but also uh, a father figure in a lot of ways too, and a professional mentor and advisor. So I'm very grateful for Eric in my life. And I love that the Kindness Games give shout outs to people specifically because of one of the things I think we see, we've always seen that leaders struggle with, and it's probably even more salient today than ever, is that leadership can be lonely. And we know that, we hear that, it's almost a trite phrase. Um, in our work, I, I do see that it's, it's almost a rule that the more senior a leader is, the more likely they, they are to be isolated, even just by the very nature of their job. We were having a great conversation, the four of us, about authenticity a little bit earlier. And um, when you have responsibility for a lot of the other people, the more people you have responsibility for, you have to be thoughtful about authenticity because you have folks who you lead who disagree with each other and might disagree with you. And, um, and sometimes your authentic self might be in direct opposition with their authentic self. Nevertheless, leadership can be lonely, but I don't believe that leaders should be. And so um, one of the things I, I continue to see in this season is a, a mark, if you will, of healthy whole leader functioning is to what extent does a leader have a supportive network of individuals around them who are both strategic for them, but who also stretch them and also support them. So who's strategic for you? Who's stretching you? Who's supporting you? Uh, Eric has been all three, but it, somebody could fit into each one of those different boxes.
Awesome. My turn? Your turn. Good, good, Daniel. Can, I have one, one question I have about the rules. Um, can people be passed away? Yeah, absolutely. The okay. only rule is really don't be a hater because it's the kindness game. <laughs> <laughs> wait, these aren't the hate games? No, this oh, is kindness oh, games. Oh, oh, wait, what? <laughs> wrong Zoom. Wrong Sorry. Zoom. <laughs> that's the other. I that's like, like, we're in the wrong place. <laughs> no, the, I, I, hater, the hater games. It'll help me because there were a couple people that have come to mind, but um, for the future. Uh, but um, the, first, the person I'm thinking of is Ann Klein. Um, and I don't think... Tim or Kathleen, you've met Anne yet, have you? I don't think either of you would have. Um, Not yet. She's a, just a, an amazing person and also is an executive coach. And uh, a lot of what you have experienced with Wild Leaders, she is responsible for. Um, she can be a bit of a hater in my life now because she makes fun of me that she has to schedule to meet with me through someone else. And every time she says that, I go, it's because of you. Like you created the scale of this vision. Um, and so, but she, uh, she had uh, made an incredible investment in my life at a point where I was at that midlife kind of crisis point of figuring out what is, what is this, what am I doing next? And um, is responsible for really uh, lighting that spark in terms of what Wild Leaders has become. And uh, Anne is an incredible inspirational person. I'd love for you to meet at some point. So. Yeah, so I mean, we have uh, like two or three minutes left. So, what are the difficulties that uh, leaders are going through right now? Like, quick bullet point and and something that can help them. Rob, well, you should, I, sh I showed one of them already. <clears throat> oh, Tim, that is such a big question. Um, I think one of the things that we are, are a part of, and in, in just in terms of what we're doing, is. Um, especially for those leaders who are trying to do it differently um, where what they see in the world is kind of the world picking, like picking, giving them linear pathways of either be a leader of compassion or be a leader of conviction. And I think instead of thinking of it as a middle pathway, that there is, there is another way that is so, so often being ignored. Um, and, and I think we're talking so much about leadership and culture, but we're, we're missing what it means to actually prepare a leader, to prepare a human being with the fortitude necessary to stand in the middle of the storm that is going to come as soon as they go out and go first. Um, how are we going to prepare? And those people that are, that are somewhat reluctant and have some of that natural connective tissue and that possibility of more courage. That is, that is difficult for them to stand. We talk about like having a thick or a thin skin, you know, and it's like, there's a reason why it takes a thick skin to stand up as a leader. And so I think um, one of the biggest things that we're facing right now is that folks like that are, are, are facing a lot of brokenness. Yeah. Um, and we know that because of the conversations that we've all been a part of together, like it doesn't take much to architect the moment where people will actually share. And, uh, and so I think that's what is both breaks my heart, but also inspires me to keep pushing forward with some things that may be counterintuitive or counterculture in terms of even what the kindness games is about. Um, and so I think that that the challenge is kind of, it's coming alongside them to Daniel's point and surrounding them because it, it is incredibly lonely for some leaders. And we were on a call just a couple of days ago, Daniel, with a CEO who's doing incredible missional work around the globe at a scale that's unfathomable and when he got on honest with us his brokenness and loneliness was something you could taste mm -hmm. um and uh and him just saying like i got nobody um my best friends now are mad at I mean mad at me like is an understatement but like where he's had he's been through these kinds of moments so that's ah, more than you wanted to hear but it's like <laughs> it's what i'm is on my heart. Kathleen, what do you have? Yeah, I totally agree with what Rob is saying. I mean, leaders right now have such a hard time because what they're trying to do is lead through all this pandemic and help their staff and themselves kind of show up authentically who they are. And at times they get knocked back down and it's difficult, right? You got to get back up, dust yourself off and say, you know, 
it's lonely at the top and who can I trust? And what I think is powerful, powerful about what Wild Leaders does is they provide that space where leaders can show up and be vulnerable and say, I feel lonely and this sucks and this is hard and I need help. And, you know, coming from a space of your heart of saying, I'm kind, I'm a great leader, I'm loving and I wanna show up for my team. And how do I do that when I, my brokenness needs support and then reaching out and saying, help me. So I feel like the more that all of us can come together and help leaders access the resources they need to kind of elevate to the next level, I feel like that's, that's our job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And my, my closing thought, um, because I'm a little bit intimidated right now, by everything that's been said, but, you know, being a leader right now and two different things, choosing to lead is not popular right now in this point in time, especially if you're mm. going to lead outside of your assigned box. So take heart, take courage and follow your conscience. The kindness games. <laughs>